Hello everyone, I'm Zach and welcome to our channel Our Rome. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification so you can be notified as and when we upload new content. So as I'm sure you've already seen by the title of this video, today I'm going to be looking at taking out the ECU for the airbag or SRS system as we have an issue with our airbag. And I thought that we had resolved the issue by a garage um, turning off the light via a diagnostics but unfortunately it's come back on, which is absolutely confirmed to us. We have the dreaded internal error on our ECU and it needs to be repaired. So traditionally you've got a couple of options. One is that you can go to a Citroen dealer and you can pay an arm and a leg to get it replaced, or you can buy a second hand one, so you can take a risk on that, and then you can go get it programmed by Citroen at a cost again, I think it's around about 100 pounds. I know you can. It ranges from about £70 to £100. Um, they will then introduce that new ECU to your van and fingers crossed that will then work and you don't develop this fault later on. Or there are companies out there. So the company that I'll be using is called Crash Data. We're going to basically send our ECU off to them. They will then repair the internal error, which is well known in these vehicles. So that's Fiat Ducatos, Peugeot Boxes, Citroen Relays or Citroen Jumper if you live in Europe and the Ram Pro Master they all suffer from this issue where the voltage is allowed to drop below a certain threshold and essentially it impacts the ECU and it develops this fault and it needs to be repaired so we're going to send it off to Crash Data they're going to do a repair on it I feel like this is a much cheaper option for us they'll then send it back the service is super quick just like the instrument cluster when we sent that off to Cartronics this company specializes in the airbag ECU modules or SRS modules. Okay, so just to give you a quick run through of where this module is housed and what we need to do. So first thing you wanna do is remove this flap here or door if you like, and we need to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Now you need to do this when you're working on electrics in a van, but more importantly, when you do anything to do with the airbag, you need to make sure that that's disconnected. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that now. And the way you do that is you take this lever here, you push that to the side, and then the whole thing pulls up. And you wanna tuck it out of the way, just to make sure you don't get an accidental connection when you're working on the van. I'd just like to uh, point out here that this part here is the actual ECU for the airbag. So what we're gonna to have to do, I'll pop the camera under here, you'll see that in order to get to the back nut, shall I say, the easiest way to do this is to basically remove the screw here. And there's another one across there. Take out this piece of plastic and that should give us better access to be able to remove this module and then get that sent off. I want to show you that these screws here are just standard crosshead screws. So you remove those with a crosshead screwdriver. And there's a second one there. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So I've just removed those screws. Here they are. And make sure to pop them somewhere safe so they don't get lost. So once we've done that, all we need to do is take this piece of plastic here. There's a flap at the back here. Just pull that to get around this angle. That'll pull in the middle first. There we go. And that's just come around like so. Just move that out of the way. There we go. Like so. That comes off and that gives us access to the ECU and the two nuts there that we need to remove so that we can free this up. I'm going to go ahead and start to remove this by undoing these bolts here. I have myself a 10mm socket and little wrench. I'm just going to use that to uh, remove those nuts. It's a 10mm nut to pop that on there, undo those, keep them somewhere safe and take it off. Now those nuts are off and what we're going to do now is go around to the other side of the van and we're going to disconnect these connectors here from the ECU module. I'd also like to point out from further inspection there's a third nut and bolt just there so that also needs to be removed. And that was out of sight before because of this plastic trim. 
So that will also need to be removed before we can do anything. So once that third bolt's been removed, you can now lift the whole unit up and out. Now what we need to do is we need to slide these green levers over the connector so that we can safely remove. Now what I'd recommend is that you give your van, or vehicle if you like, um, I'd recommend that you give your van at least five minutes to discharge any residual energy that's in the system before removing this. Okay, so that was incredibly stiff, but let me show you how it works. So this lever here is on top of this. Let's focus. This lever here moves, and this is the button here that needs to be pressed as it's preventing this from moving forward. And as you pull it forward, the cable or connector, if you like, then pops away and frees the ECU module. There she is. And something I would like to stress is that when this ECU module is removed, please don't reconnect your battery. When you send this off, just leave your van parked up somewhere with the battery disconnected. Um, I did check with the person on the phone. They did say I could drive the van. However, I would strongly advise against it. You don't want to cause any issues. You don't have an ECU module in your van. And if you were unfortunate enough to be in an accident, your airbag would not deploy and it would not be safe at all because obviously as a driver, you could hit the steering wheel and uh, cause injury or have loss of life. So I'm not here to teach you to suck eggs. I'm just saying that um, I will not be driving the van um, whilst this is in the post and being repaired and that I'll only reconnect the battery uh, once I've received the ECU back. I've plugged it in and I'm ready to check the system out. So what I'll do now, um, I showed you in a previous video, I'll show you how to lock up the van Obviously, because with the battery disconnected, um, the central lock-in won't work. Um, it isn't an issue for the driver's door, as that has um, an actual key lock on the door. But it is an issue for the uh, passenger door. But there is a little trick that you can do with a screwdriver, with a little latch to lock the door manually, which um, I will show you again, even though I've previously shown you in another video, just for the context of this video. Now, as you'll see, there's this little hole just here. And you want to take something long and thin, like a little screwdriver, or I've got my um, little Allen key here, and you want to pop it in until you can feel resistance, and you just push up until you hear a click. It's like a little latch that you can pull up. And then when you shut the door, that is it locked and secure. Now, before I disconnected the battery, what I did was I remotely locked the entire van so that this door would be locked also and um, I only opened up the cabin so I knew that um, once the battery is disconnected this would already be locked and if I need to get into the van for any reason then that is not an issue because as you can see on the rear it has a, a key lock here which means you'll be able to still get into the back of your van. Now all that's left to do is lock the van with the key on this door and the van's still secure with the battery disconnected. Right, once you've got your um, airbag ECU out, what you want to do is you want to um, just take, well, you want to make a note of this top number here, which is the actual model number of the airbag ECU. And what you want to do is you want to go to Crash Data's website. So we'll do that now, which is Crash Data. UK. and we're going to search for Citroen Relay which we've already seen. Now as you've just seen what we need to do now is we need to make sure that our ECU model number matches up to one of these. In fact, that one there looks like R1. I'll just double check that. So it's 0137 097 8080. So that is the one. So go ahead and give that a click. Close the little chat window down. And as it says, it's £60. So it's £72, including VAT. And you go ahead and add it to cart. And also, if you read here, it says uh, we can also repair your module. If it has an internal error, commonly caused by a flat battery. 
And as I mentioned earlier, um, down here it says they've seen prices as high as £750 from the uh, main dealers, I guess, yeah, main dealer, um, to get that replaced. Whereas they will attempt to repair it for the £60 X VAT, which makes it £72 altogether. And I spoke to the lady on the phone and she said that if they're unable to repair it, then they'll charge £18 um, just for looking at it, basically. So you don't have to pay. If it's not going to fix it, then they're not going to charge you that full amount. They're only going to charge you the £18. So what you need to do is you go ahead, add that to the cart. Hit check out. And I'll get that all sent off. Okay, so I've booked it and I've just received my email, um, essentially just to say that if the money's all gone through. The shipping cost to send it back was six pounds, as you can see on here. So it cost me a grand total of 79 pound 20. And they just explained that it needs to go to, as you can see, crash data, unit 10, two commerce way, Liverpool, L8, 7BL UK. So I just need to whack it in a jiffy bag. Here it is. Uh, it needs to go into like a, a protected envelope and we'll send that off. That's all been paid for and hopefully they'll return it in good time. Hey everyone. So those uh, videos that I recorded uh, were actually from Wednesday. So um, fast forward in time now, uh, we're currently sitting on Monday and I finally received um, the product back. Uh, there was a little bit of a situation with Royal Mail. Um, as you can see, some time has gone. Um, I'm sporting a magician's beard as part of my uh, lockdown, one of my many lockdown looks. So apologies if I look very different. I've got my glasses on today. So, um, so essentially, the device was faulty. And the most common cause for the type of error code that I had was that the circuit board had been damaged. Now that can happen due to multiple things. One of the leading causes of that is the device, um, sorry, the, the van itself being jump started incorrectly and it can actually fry the circuit board on the airbag ECU itself. Um, another way that this happens is through corrosion and I did see a tiny little bit of corrosion on the pins on the inside and they've actually sent photos back to me to show me. Now, as you know, um, it can be quite expensive to replace these parts, and I have had to have a replacement. However, Crash Data had a couple of what they call donor modules, um, which they were then able to put what they call the proxy alignment. So that essentially is the coding aspect of the ECU. They take that from the old one and they put it onto the new one. So what they've done is they've, in effect, sold me a, a donor module, which... I will show you in a second, um, looks to me like it's pretty much brand new. Now, I have heard through the grapevine that there are a lot of vans that are sold to airports and because of certain, um, for certain legal reasons, they're not allowed explosives on these vans. So they take the airbag systems out and then companies like Crash Data go and buy these um, airbag ECUs because they're great. They're literally like brand new. Um, so the one I have because I have checked it already, um, is from 2012, but it looks completely new. Um, I'm not sure what the story is behind it, but basically what's happened is I bought the donor module from Crash Data. They charged me a hundred pounds. Um, and then I had to pay for some of like the, the money that were already, already paid kind of went on top of that. And then I had to pay for some postage and stuff. So all in all, it's cost me about 200 pounds for it to be coded and receive the donor module from Crash Data. Uh, the issue I had with it was that I was supposed to receive the product back because they actually sent it at 24 hours. So I was supposed to receive the product back on Friday. So apologies that the video has been massively delayed. Um, I was then told I was going to receive on Saturday. Um, it went to the Southamp uh, Southampton Depot and I think it might have um, got a bit delayed with the Royal Mail. But they finally delivered it today. I was really impressed with the way it's packaged as well, which I haven't fully opened it, but I wanted to kind of show you uh, what they do. So uh, I'll go ahead and open this now so you can see. So it wasn't another envelope as well. I've taken that off for um, privacy reasons because it's got my address on there and stuff. So um, it's in a really well-protected bag. 
and then it's basically in this sealed bag and um, they've got some information here um, which is about like some of the scam results from the actual ECU themselves um, they've just written some bits and bobs on here so um, this I think was the scan results for my one uh, which is just oh, sorry if I can get that in focus. I'm not going to be able to get that in focus. I'll just read to you what that says because I've since learned that there's um, two types of errors, okay? And uh, you could probably save yourself a lot of time if you have one of those diagnostics tools. Um, if you found out what airbag error you have, then you would know if you have this hardware issue, which is unrepairable, or whether you have the very common issue with these vans, which is that simply the battery has been allowed to drop too low and that low voltage has kind of created this error on the ECU. Very, very common with motorhome owners, as I mentioned earlier on back on Wednesday when I recorded this. So the main issue you get, um, there's two types of errors that they, they see mainly for these types of vans and that's Fiat Ducatos, Peugeot boxes, Citroen relays or Citroen jumpers if you're in Europe or I guess the uh, Dodge um, Ram Pro Masters as well. I think they use the same airbag system, so it's, they're all the same van. They all use the same parts. Um, in fact, yeah, the actual part itself says Fiat on it. So you can see <laughs> it is a Fiat part. So um, the issue you get, you get a B0101, which is essentially the airbag um, has had that issue with the low voltage and that will give you the airbag light. Um, so that's where they can just turn it off and resolve that issue essentially. Um, crash data do hundreds of those apparently. Um, and then you get another error which is B0102 and that is the one that is highlighted there in orange, highlighter. And that specifically says here connection to ECU grounding. So again, that's either been damaged through fault, um, jumping the van incorrectly um, or it's been damaged through corrosion. And as you know, they're not in the best location. You know, if someone spills a drink or something like that, that could technically corrode the device if it was to get in in those areas. Um, also on these vans, what a lot of people don't realise is that actually inside the bonnet are some mount um, points, if you like, to actually um, jump the van, should you need to, uh, which I might go over in a further in a in a video later on down the line, because I think that's really important. Again, when people jump in straight onto the battery of jump leads, uh, you don't realise the damage you can do to these vehicles, and a, a lot of vehicles actually have this, where um, when the batteries are inside, they actually have points um, where you would jump the vehicle, and that would safely allow the um, current to flow through the vehicle without damaging any of the components that's kind of what they're designed for so it's always worth checking your um, owner's manual just to check um, how you do that obviously i'm not here to the whole point of this video isn't to teach you how to do that but i believe that it wasn't too badly corroded i think it would be normal to expect a little bit on there just because of the location of where it is you know people stepping in and out of the vans with wet feet especially builders um i would expect a little bit of moisture to have got on that uh, but I really do think in the past this van has been stationary and I think it's been jumped incorrectly, which is what's caused the airbag issue. So, um, yeah, let me go ahead and open this packet and um, I'll show you the condition of the one they've sent me. It's the first time I've opened it up. It's not actually held it yet. It's been in the packaging. So here it is. As you can see, it's in really good condition, much better condition than the one that I had originally that was all rubbed off. Um, the back of it was kind of furry here. It was a little bit furry down here as well. Um, I had a little bit of corrosion along this line. The connections inside, I mean, this looks absolutely immaculate. I mean, I can't show you really because of the camera. Apologies, I'm using my phone. Um, it's just immaculate and I'm really chuffed with this. Like I paid two hundred pounds essentially. It cost me your best part of almost a hundred pounds. I think I had a quote for eighty pounds just to get it programmed. And then I would have had to run the risk of buying something from eBay, which I don't know the history of it, whereas this has literally been checked on the system by Crash Data. Um they've been really friendly on the phone. I've been dealing with this lady uh who's been super, super friendly and um I spoke to her today because I was worried I wasn't gonna receive it. 
And I said, well, you know, worst case scenario, what if Royal Mail had lost this in the post? Is my data going to be lost for the whole proxy alignment for the programming? And um, she was like, no, absolutely not. We keep a backup of everything as well. So um, should that have happened, we would have been able to resolve that for you, which is just really reassuring to hear. Um, I cannot recommend these people enough. If you're going to send these off, use crash data. And like I said, if they can't resolve the issue, I had the option of having it received back to me and they're going to charge me basically £20, which would be the diagnostics fee um, to check it out. <laughs> That's literally their diagnostics fee. And if you go to like an auto electrician or a garage, their diagnostics fee is going to be a lot more than that. So um, unless you're someone that has your own diagnostics tool and you want to check if you've got that B0101 or B0102, which is the, you know, that's it's the two code that is the one that is no good. And if you don't have those tools, then I'll still recommend sending it off because they can check to see if it is something they can look at. So... I'm looking forward to getting this in the fan. <laughs> it's uh, like a first for us on the island. Or I don't say a first, but it's a rarity. Uh, we had a little bit of snow today. Um, it's completely gone now, but to see snow on the island is super rare. And it is absolutely freezing. I swear it's got to be the coldest day of the year thus far. So um, I'm going to be as quick as I can. I'm not going to do much today. Um, I'm going to pop this into the van. Obviously, I'll go through the process of that with you again. And... Uh, yeah, then I think I'm going to come back indoors because it's absolutely freezing. <laughs> so, anyway, let's crack on. If you want to see something super rare, Isle of White snow. <laughs> so rare. Oh, it's that cold here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this now. Um, all I need to do is I need to obviously plug these into these here. Um, what I'd make sure uh, if I was you and I'm going to do this now as well is that this does not make a connection at all so just all times just double check that this is not going to be making a connection because obviously what we're doing is we're messing with the airbag and um, so I'm going to go ahead and connect those now and then we'll start um, screwing it in or should I say like get the nuts in and then put the, the trim back. Now as you push these in when you screw actually squeeze it into the ECU these actually rock back on their own so once they've done that just make sure it's nice and tight and then just pull this back sorry about my finger in the way there uh, pull these back um, they go outwards so pull them back uh, to, to click into position and then just give it a wiggle just to make sure that's nice and sturdy and that's not going anywhere then what you want to do is put them put the device onto its mounting points like so, then get those nuts on top of those points there. It's a 10 mil, so I'm gonna use a 10 mil socket just to make sure that they're gonna be nice and tight and that's not gonna get anywhere. Try not to over tighten these nuts. As you can see, they've got a lot of play. Once you've got the ratchet on there. I made it as tight as I could with my fingers first and just tighten up with these. When you feel the resistance just give it a quarter of a turn. There you go. Voila. So the next bit to go back is this plastic trim. So that sits underneath and then you've got two screws. They're just Phillips screws so you're only going to need a crosshead screwdriver. And that's it there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And uh, then we'll talk about the battery. That piece of trim is now in place. I've also screwed it in. As you can see, the screws are in there. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly just because the angle you need to um, kind of get to the screws at. So I'm on a road here and it's pretty busy. So it's a little bit awkward. So I'm kind of like kneeling over the seats to do it. Now it's not the most impossible task in the world, but is a little bit fiddly and uh once i started uh putting those screws in it kind of just corrected itself and put itself into the right place and just double check on the sides to make sure it's where it needs to be which it is now i'm just gonna move for this one regarding the battery what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and connect it the negative 
to the negative terminal. And before we do anything with the van, we're going to give it another five minutes for these used to talk to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on now. Just push it down. You can hear the pump going already on the primer. And what you do is you literally push that lever. It's a bit stiff at this angle. There you go. And that's nice and in place. And we're going to wait five minutes from now before I do anything with the ignition. So I've given it five minutes or maybe a bit longer and uh, I'm quite nervous actually to turn it on but um, you're here with me uh, for the experience so third time lucky eh? Let's uh, flip around and uh, put the ignition on. Here we go. The airbag light has gone out. Obviously, you can tell it was raining when I last drove this. There you go, that looks really promising to me. So let's turn this, turn this off, turn those lights off, turn the reversing camera off. So yeah, it looks like the airbag light is off. So um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, start her up, um, which I'll do now. Ah, it looks like we have a flat battery. <laughs> oh dear. Hang on a second. <sighs> it's never easy, is it? There we go. It is pretty cold. I think it's safe to say that um, the battery is pretty... Uh, pretty flat it's been sitting there like I said it's, it's, it's pretty cold I don't know how old the battery is obviously it came with the van but again it's just lovely to not hear that horrible beeping noise um, I'm just really happy with this actually um, and I'm praying now that you know that's going to be end of that saga and we can actually just crack on with the the build so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just take her for a little drive around the block and see if we can get some um, juice back in that battery and then uh yeah, I'll uh, chat to you after that. So I've just taken the van for a bit of a drive locally, obviously because of coronavirus, just to get a bit of charge in the battery so that I can um, park her up and, you know, make sure that I'm not going to have any issues turning her over. And um, first of all, the, the airbag light has stayed off. So I just want to say, you know, big shout out to um, Crash Data. I'm not in any way affiliated with Crash Data. Um, I had no discount. I spent my own money and... Um, They've just been really good, and I would definitely use them again in the future, um, and I highly recommend them. Uh, regarding all of you lot that have um, been supporting us so far, um, I appreciate that the videos haven't been um, so much about um, the build. We've been trying to sort out all of these niggly little bits, uh, but I think that's going to be the case with like, any van you get. There's no van that's going to be perfect. You're going to have some issues at the beginning, and uh, hopefully I've helped some people by trying to resolve some of ours. And now we can focus predominantly on getting the build done, which is the thing that we're looking forward to the most. And then obviously just traveling and just being able to share that with you and taking you on that journey with us. So yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that's been supporting us so far. Um, it means a lot. appreciate your comments, your engagement as well, whether you like it or dislike um, um, on the videos. And uh, if you've got any feedback for me or any questions, please communicate. I'm pretty good at getting back to everybody through the comments. And if you're new around here, um, please support our channel by subscribing to our videos. And, um, you know, if you're waiting for the next one to come out, hit the little bell notification as well and you'll be notified when we release new content. So I just wanted to say to everyone, thank you very much. And, um, yeah, I'm just we're loving this experience and you'll be hearing from Angela very soon um, on the videos when we uh, get proper stuck into the build. So stay safe, everyone. Look after each other.